These are the 10 best exercises to improve your balance and reduce your chance of falling. If you do all of these once a day, you will see a tremendous improvement in your balance and walking. This is based on research that shows that activities that challenge your balance are more effective than strengthening at improving coordination and balance. Always consult your doctor before beginning an exercise program. With all the activities in this program, only do the ones you feel safe to do. These exercises are progressively harder. At first, you might only be able to do the first few, but as you improve, you'll be able to do all of them. This program will work if you do it every day for a few weeks. The first exercise is sit to stand. Now, with one or two pillows under you, you're going to push off of the chair, come to standing, and grab onto the countertop that's in front of you. You can do this as slowly as you want, and you can take as many breaks as you like. If you feel that you're getting tired, just sit on the chair for a few seconds until you feel like you're ready to keep going. You're gonna be doing this for two minutes total, so definitely pace yourself. In the beginning, you might find that in two minutes, you can only do six or seven, but as time goes by, you might be able to do as many as 20. It just depends on your fitness level when you start. But a lot of people that do this are gonna be struggling just to do seven or eight of these in two minutes. So don't feel bad if you have to do it slowly with a lot of breaks. Now. When you do this, you want to push off the seat with your both hands and you want to, as you get your bottom up, you're going to be putting your head over your knees so you can see your toes and then try to stand up all the way, grabbing onto the counter. You want to avoid grabbing the countertop too soon because you don't want to be pulling on the countertop to get yourself to stand up. If you do that, you're probably not going to be able to get better at this. The only way that you can improve is to try to do this using your own legs. Now, as you get a lot better at this, you might even find that you don't need to use your hands every time to stand up, and that's great. That's how you're gonna improve with it. So sometimes you're going to just wanna push off with maybe one hand and then use your legs the rest of the way to get you up to standing. It's very important that when you do it, that you stand up all the way. You don't want to be halfway up when you're grabbing the, the countertop. You want to be standing up all the way and then, and then grab the countertop when you're fully in standing. You also want your feet to be shoulder width apart when you do this. For the next exercise, we're going to try to stand heel to toe. So this exercise is a little bit different because you're gonna be standing still when you do it. You wanna put one foot in front of the other, facing the sink with your hands on the sink. When you feel that you're steady on your feet, you wanna to try to slowly let go, hovering your hands over the sink. You don't wanna bring your hands down to your side and you definitely don't want to raise your hands overhead because doing those two things is going to throw off your balance and actually make this harder. The goal of this is to stand straight with one foot in front of the other, balancing on your two feet. Now, some people, in order to do this, they're not going to be able to put one foot touching the other foot. So instead of your toe touching your heel, there can be a little bit of a gap between your toe and heel. That will make this exercise easier. Some people are going to need to have a five or six inch gap when they first start doing this. But what you want to do is to try to have your feet close enough together so that it, it takes about 20 seconds before you lose your balance. Once you, can, once you can balance for about 20 seconds in this position, then you wanna bring your feet as close as possible to make it a little bit more challenging. And you wanna to try to hold your hands up as long as you can before you need to put them back down. The only time your hands should come down is when you're losing your balance. So when you do this activity at home, you might start off looking a lot like I am right now, but as you get better at it, you'll be able to go longer and longer with your hands in the air. That's the goal, is to try to be able to balance without holding for as long as possible. Always remember to switch your feet anytime you lose your balance. 
Now for the third exercise, we're going to be practicing stepping to the side. So you're gonna to wanna to stand up, still the chair is behind you, grabbing the countertop, and you're gonna take two small steps to the right, and then two small steps to the left. You'll notice I'm standing in front of the sink the entire time. I'm not leaving the sink. That way, in case I lose my balance, I have something to grab onto. Now, when you do this exercise, you want to practice lifting the leg that's moving by putting all your weight on the other leg. So you don't want to slide your feet or shuffle your feet. You actually want to lift the leg that's moving. So in order to lift that leg, you're going to have to put all your pressure on the other leg. And if you notice, when someone does this correctly, they're going to feel that they're shifting their weight from side to side as they step first left and then right. So if you step to the right, you're going to be shifting your weight to the left every time you move your right leg. And then the same is true when you move your left leg. In the beginning, you can do this with, with your hands holding onto the counter the whole time. But as you get better, you can start to let go of the counter and do it with your hands in the air. You just need to make sure that your hands are there in case you lose your balance. Don't do this exercise with your hands at your side. It's actually very dangerous to do that because if you lose your balance, you might not be able to grab onto the edge of the countertop fast enough. And again, the reason that I'm doing this at a sink is because it's a lot easier to grab on to the edge of the sink where my hands are if I'm losing my balance. If you're just on a countertop, it's a lot harder to grab onto it and you could lose your balance and fall. As far as how fast you do this, you really want to do it fairly slow. What's important is that you're lifting your leg up high when you slide it out to the side and as you get better that you're lifting your hands off. For the next exercise, we're going to practice single leg stands. Now to do a single leg stand, you want to grab the counter with both hands, put all your weight on one leg, and then try to let go for as long as possible. It's fine if you need to grab the counter again. If you do, I suggest that you switch to the other leg. This lets the first leg have a little bit of a break and gives you a chance to kind of get your balance back again to try it again. So you want to go from right to left, standing on one leg for as long as possible with your hands off the counter for as long of a time as you can handle. Then when you grab the counter, you put your other foot down, you switch legs and you do the same thing on the opposite leg. Now, whenever you do this, if you're finding that it's difficult, you need to put your body weight fully over the leg that's standing. If you watch when I do it, I'm actually shifting my weight about eight inches from the right to the left to get my body, my hips, centered over the foot that's standing. You wanna do that while you're holding on to the countertop and then let go of the countertop and see how long you can balance in that position. But definitely, if you're having trouble, it's because you're not leaning enough. You really have to lean to the right and left to get into a position where you can really balance yourself. It's actually a lot easier to balance yourself when your hips are over your leg. And as we get older, a lot of us forget that and we stop doing that. And instead we tend to shuffle and not lift our feet as high when we walk. And we actually, after a while, we get afraid to balance on one leg. But balancing on one leg is almost the key to improving your balance. Now for the next exercise, we're gonna do what I call a pillow tap. You're gonna put a pillow on the ground. You can hold the counter at first and you're gonna go right to left. So you're gonna tap your right foot on the pillow and then your left foot on the pillow. And you can go as slow or as fast as you want and you can take as many breaks as you want. The minute that you feel that it's getting difficult, grab the counter and rest for a minute and then start over. You can also sit down at any point and, and rest before you continue on. What's important is that you keep trying this for two minutes, but it's fine to take as many breaks as you want. Just keep tapping right then left. 
What this exercise does is it helps you learn how to properly shift your weight. What you don't want to do is hold the counter the entire time that you're doing it. It's fine to grab the counter whenever you're having trouble, but don't hold the counter the entire time. If you're finding this difficult and you're too close to the pillow, try stepping back from the pillow. The pillow should be about eight inches away from your feet. In this video, because of the angle of the camera, it might not look it, but that pillow is about eight inches away from me. So you want the pillow out in front so you don't have to bend your hips as much when you lift your foot up. For a lot of people, this is very scary to do this. You could even turn the chair around so that the back of the chair is facing you and then you'd have the countertop and the chair right next to you while you're doing it. Anytime you feel like you're losing your balance with this, you want to grab back onto the counter. But if you can, you want to keep trying to do this for the full two minutes. You shouldn't be out of breath. You shouldn't be in pain. If you are, then stop and rest and sit down. Now for the next exercise, we're going to move the pillow out of the way. And the third exercise is backwards walking. So for this exercise, we're not going to let go of the counter. We're going to stand with the chair on one side of us, the counter on the other, and just take small steps backwards, just two or three steps until we stop and turn around facing the counter and then walk backwards again. Now this is an exercise that for a lot of people is very difficult. It's very scary for them to try and walk backwards because they haven't been practicing it very much. And it's okay with this exercise if you hold the counter, especially when you first are learning to do this. You want to take two or three small steps backwards in each direction and always turn facing the counter. Don't turn facing away from the counter because then there's nothing to hold on to. Now, as you get better at this exercise, you can start to lift your hand up higher off the counter. Instead of gliding your hand along the counter, you can keep your hand up in the air while you're taking the steps back. You can also make it more difficult by taking longer steps. You can do that either while you're holding the counter or if you're letting go of the counter, you can try to take a little bit longer step. But make sure that you're ne not doing this away from the countertop. You need something to hold on to just to be safe if you're doing these balance exercises. The next exercise is to perform sit to stand with your arms crossed in front of you. Now, it's okay to have one or two pillows underneath you depending on your ability level, but you definitely, for this level three exercise, don't want to push off the chair. You want to cross your hands over your chest and come to standing. Now, if you can't do this exercise the way it is video, then I would shift to either level one or level two exercises, depending on your, on your ability level. And once you've done those for a few weeks and get a little bit stronger, then you can progress to level three. So when you do this, you want to practice bending forward first so that your head is over your knees, then coming up to stand. Now there's a countertop in front of you in case you feel like you're losing your balance. But for the most part, you should have your hands crossed for the full two minutes. You want to do as many as you can, but every so often I recommend stopping and resting to catch your breath. You don't want to get out of breath doing this exercise. It is dangerous if you push yourself a little bit too hard. Everyone has a different ability level and some people might need to take three or four rests. Other people might need to rest every two or three repetitions. It just depends. None of that really matters. All that matters is that every time you do it, you do it a little bit better than the last time. You're really not in competition with anyone but yourself with this type of exercise. 
So you wanna keep going for the full two minutes. So if you, if you take a break, that's, that's great, but then you wanna resume it until the timer ends. Now, if towards the end, if you're getting tired, you can definitely use your hands to push off of the chair, but you wanna try to do it with your arms crossed in front of you until you can't. But it, if you wanna still finish the final two minutes, the final part, it's okay to use your hands. Heel to toe, forward and backward. So forward means you bring your foot in front of the other foot. If you can, you wanna touch your heel to the shoe in front of you, but it's okay if you wanna take a little bit of a space. And then you actually go backwards doing the same thing in reverse. So you're going backwards, heel to toe, and then forward, heel to toe. If you need to grab the counter, it's right there to your side. You can also turn the chair around if you're feeling like you need help on both sides so that you have something to hang on to. But you don't wanna get too far away from the sink opening because that's the best place to grab if you lose your balance. And you see I'm sliding my finger along the countertop. If you're finding that this is difficult, you can try doing that for a few weeks until you can get better at it. All of these exercises will get better if you do them every single day. It's okay if you wanna watch where your feet are going with this activity. I know a lot of times people are told to keep their head up when they're walking, which is true. But when you're doing something like this, you kinda do wanna see where your feet are falling so that you have an idea of how far apart your feet are when you take each step. Now, you, as you get better, you can speed this up a little bit, but you never want to leave the safety of the countertop. You always want the countertop to be on one side of you. And if you're finding that this is all too difficult, I would try the level one exercises until you get a bit stronger and, and more balanced, and then you can try these, and you might find that these are a lot easier. And again, if you need to take a break, that's fine. You can take a break at any point and sit down or just take a break and stand. Just keep trying to do the activity after you take your break until the end of the two minutes. Now for the next activity, and this is a hard one, we're gonna practice stepping over a pillow. Now for safety, I would definitely recommend turning the chair around so you have the counter on one side of you and the back of the chair on the other. And what you're trying to do is step forward over the pillow and then step backward over the pillow. Now, I'm using a pillow, but you can use anything. You don't have to use a pillow. A pillow is actually hard for a lot of people. The advantage of the pillow is you can always step on it and it won't really make a difference. But I would say if someone's having trouble, they could put something down on the ground that's maybe two inches tall and two inches wide and just practice stepping forward and backward over that until it gets easier. A pillow that's low is also a good choice, but you need to have the countertop and the chair next to you while you try this. In the very beginning, if you find this is too hard, leave the pillow out of it. Just step forward without anything in front of you. Just practice basically taking a big step with the countertop and the chair next to you. If you're having trouble walking, or you find that you're shuffling or using a walker or a cane, you can try doing this to, to get used to walking without an assistive device. But you have to make this exercise the right difficulty level for you. Not everybody is gonna be able to step over a pillow. And if this is too difficult and it's just impossible for you to do, I would say you should be doing the level two exercises or the level one exercises until you get to the point where those are easy and then come back to this. So you wanna try to keep going for the full two minutes, but if you're feeling tired, you can stop and rest at any point. You don't have to keep doing it continually for two minutes. You just have to keep trying to do it for two minutes. Then at the end of the two minutes, 
we're going to turn the chair back around just for safety and then we're going to sit down remove the pillow and now we're on to our last exercise which is to try to stand facing the sink on one leg balancing on one leg without holding onto the countertop and our goal is to try to do this for 20 seconds on each leg so we're going to stand grabbing the countertop shift our weight over the leg that we're standing on so that your hips are centered over that leg let go of the counter and try to slowly count to 20. once you can do that without any problem and some of you might never get to that point but if you can get to the point where you can go for 20 and you're not having any trouble the next level would be to close your eyes for part of that 20 seconds you don't have to close your eyes for the full 20 seconds but closing your eyes for a part of that you're going to find that that really throws your balance off and it's it's still really a good challenge this is a great exercise to re rebuild your proprioceptive awareness and your balance. The key to this exercise is the weight shift. You have to fully shift your weight over the leg that you're standing on. If you don't fully shift your weight, you're not really gonna be able to stand for, for even 10 seconds. But once you can get your hips centered over your foot, then when you let go, you'll be able to balance on that side for the full 20 seconds. Now, be very careful if you close your eyes when you're doing this exercise because it's very disorienting and it's, it's likely that you'll lose your balance when you're doing that. So you want to make sure that you're standing directly in front of the sink with your hands over the sink so that if you lose your balance, you can quickly grab the edge of the sink to balance and steady yourself. Now, if at any point you feel tired during the two minutes, just stop and stand there, or you can even stop and sit down on the chair for a few seconds, catch your breath, and then resume the exercise until the time limit is up. Okay, you've done your 10 minutes to improve your balance. You wanna do this every day until you see an improvement. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos like this. If you want to access my full training course, click the link below in the description.